This talk is on a new deterministic algorithm for fully dynamic upper choice paths. This is a joint work by Julia at TTIC and myself. So the problem we're considering is the fully dynamic upper choice path problem, APSP. For inputs, we're given an undirected inverse graph G with non-negative lengths on its edges that undergoes an online sequence of edge insertion and deletions. Our goal is to support distance query given the pair for this X and Y, we were asked to return the distance between X and Y, and shortest path query, we were asked to return the shortest path connecting X to Y. So for simplicity, let's assume that all the edge lengths are bounded above by poly n. So we care about total update time, which is the time it requires to maintain the data structure throughout the whole algorithm, and query time, which is the time it takes to process a single query. So ideally, we would like the total update time to be closer to linear in n, and the query time for shortest path query to be proportional to the number of edges of the path returned. So notice that this total update time and query time requirements for shortest path query are both near optimal. In addition, we require that our algorithm correspond to a distance query in time of polylog n. So one simple algorithm for dynamic APSP is the following. Whenever a query comes along, we can simply compute the shortest path connecting x to y from scratch. So this algorithm solves the problem exactly and it has total update time big O of m, which is optimal. However, the query time is big theta of m, which is far from optimal. So the question is, can we maintain some additional data structure where we can achieve much faster query time and still get a uh, near optimal total update time? So there's a long line of work that gives negative results for dynamic APSP, but I won't go into detail about them. There are also works that shows if we can get fast algorithm for dynamic APSP, then it will lead to breakthrough results in fine grained complexity. The best current negative result is given by Abud et al. in 2022, where they showed that no algorithm can simultaneously achieve total update time big O of m to one plus epsilon and approximation factor one over c epsilon for some constant c. This is under the three sum or APSP conjecture. So given this strong lower bound, our ideal algorithm is likely unattainable unless we, we compromise on our approximation factors. So we adjust our goal a bit. Now we only require algorithm to support approximate distance query where we are asked to return an alpha approximation on the distance and approximate shortest path query where we're asked to return a path of less, less than alpha times the distance between X and Y, where alpha is the approximation factor of an algorithm so ideally, we would like to achieve as low of an approximation factor alpha as possible. So what are some motivation for us to look, look into this problem? First, it clearly has some real world applications. And secondly, subroutines for computing shortest path are basic building blocks for many other algorithms. And we need such a building block for dynamic algorithms as well. And third, uh, algorithm for dynamic APSP can be used to design fast algorithms for classical static problems. And often these application require near optimal query time. That's why this is one of the requirements for our ideal algorithm. So one really important special case of dynamic APSP is decremental APSP. So the only difference to, full, to the fully dynamic version is that the graph this time only undergoes an online sequence of edge deletions. And we have the same goal, which is to support approximate shortest path query and approximate distance query. So our contributions are the following. First, we improve known results for decremental SPSP. And secondly, we extend the algorithm to the fully dynamic setting. Recall that this is our ideal algorithm. There's actually one more requirement I would like to add. I would like to distinguish between oblivious versus adaptive adversary. So for oblivious adversary, the sequence update to graph G is constructed in advance and it cannot depend on the algorithm's behavior. However, in the adaptive adversary setting, each update to graph G may depend arbitrarily on the algorithm's, algorithm's past behavior, such as its response to queries. And it's important to note that deterministic algorithm always work against adaptive adversary. So we would like our algorithm to be able to withstand an adaptive adversary. So let's add this requirement to our ideal algorithm. So why do we care about adaptive adversary? So first of all, it's simply a stronger model and it gives us more robust algorithms and secondly, it's better fit for various applications. And thirdly, application to static problems require adaptive adversary. There are many works done for dynamic APSP under various settings. For example, there are many works done in low approximation regime where they sacrifice on total update time to achieve low approximation factors. But since that's not the focus of our paper, I won't discuss the results here. So for now, 
let's fix a requirement that the algorithm achieves near uh, optimal total update time and I will survey some relevant results. So in a oblivious decremental setting, there is a lot of work. And this line of work culminated with the work by Chichek in 2018, where they showed that give for any integer k greater than or equals to one and epsilon between zero and one, he gave an algorithm that achieves approximation factor two plus epsilon k minus one and total update time O of m and to the one over k plus little O of one. So this is near optimal as all its parameters almost matches the best static algorithm of Thorpe and Zweck of O1. And this was slightly improved later by Lucky and Nazari in 2020 to without the little of one factor. In fully dynamic or oblivious setting, there are some works done in, on weighted graphs. For weighted graphs, there's this work by Froster et al. in 2019, where they give an algorithm that achieves approximation factor log n to the O of one over epsilon and achieves update time O of m to epsilon per operation. However, their algorithm can only support distance queries. So uh, now I will fix the requirement that uh, the algorithm achieves near optimal query time and can withstand adaptive adversary. And I will survey some uh, relevant results. So the progress in fully dynamic setting is quite slow. We There's the work by uh, Krakmars and Lucky in 2019, where they give an algorithm that achieves total update time O of n to the third over epsilon an approximation of one plus epsilon. On the other hand, the progress in decremental setting is much faster. There's a cast classic Evan Schlag tree where they give a deterministic algorithm that achieves one plus epsilon approximation in total update time O of M and squared. And the best previous result is given by True Choice Stock 21 paper where she gives an algorithm that is deterministic and achieves approximation factor alpha equals to log M to the two to the O of one over epsilon and total update time O of M to the one plus epsilon. I just want to mention that in the oblivious setting, the approximation factor is O of one over epsilon. There's this also independent work by Bernstein et al. in 2022, where they gave a deterministic algorithm that achieves O M to the little O of one approximation ratio in total update time big O of M to the one plus little O of one. However, the exact trade-off between approximation factor and total update time is not spelled out. We built our work on True Choice Stock 21 paper. So first notice that uh, her algorithm is deterministic and achieves near optimal query time. However, the, the trade-off between approximation factor and total update time is still far from being optimal. So we improve the result of her paper in two ways. First, we get better trade-off between approximation factor and total update time for decremental PSP. We improve the approximation ratio to log log M to the two to the O of one over epsilon to the third. We can set epsilon such that we get a sub logarithm approximation in your optimal total update time. And secondly, we extend the algorithm to a fully dynamic setting where we achieve the following trade off between approximation factor and update time. Notice that again, we can set epsilon such that we get sub logarithm approximation and total update time m to the one plus little of one. I will now focus on how we get the above two results. So the first thing we do, which is very standard, is by noticing that it's enough to solve the problem for each distance to Gaudi separately. So what do I mean by this? So for distance query, we, we only need to distinguish between whether the distance between X and Y are less than D or if it's greater than alpha D. And for short path queries, we only need to respond correctly if the distance between X and Y are approximately D, and we just need to return a path of less that is close to D. So from now on, let's fix a distance scale D. So the main tool we use is sparse numerical cover. This was used many times in previous works and True Choice Stack 21 paper also builds on this result. So what is sparse neighborhood cover? So we're given on directed weighted graph G and a D alpha D neighborhood cover is a collection C of vertex induced subgraph of G. We call such a, a subgraph a cluster and then to satisfy the following requirements for every vertex in G, there must exist a cluster such that the ball of radius D around the vertex V is completely contained in a cluster. And secondly, for every cluster and every two vertices in the cluster, the distance between these two vertex must be less than alpha D in the graph G. So notice that it is impossible to keep clusters disjoint. So we require that every vertex only belongs to a few clusters. So there are very efficient algorithms for constructing uh, sparse numerical covers and static graphs. 
However, for our purpose, we need a dynamic version of the problem. Recursive dynamic neighborhood covering problem was introduced by Chu Chu in her previous work as an intermediate problem. We can think of it as the sparse neighborhood cover in decremental setting. So the input to the problem is a bipartite graph H with non-negative length on its edges. We call the set V regular vertices and set U super nodes. So, and we're also given distance parameter D and H undergoes an online sequence of valid update operations that includes edge deletion, isolated vertex deletion, and supernode splitting. So intuitively, you can think of supernode splitting as adding a new vertex and connecting this new vertex to the neighbors, some of the neighbors of the uh, previous uh, vertex. So our main goals are the following. We want to maintain D alpha D neighbor who cover C of H. And the only allowed operations on this uh, collection of clusters are the following. We can delete edge and vertices from a cluster, and new clusters can only be added if it comes from a cluster splitting operation. And secondly, we require that the algorithm can support short path query. Given a cluster C and two vertices in the cluster, we need to return a path connecting them of short lengths. And this alpha is the approximation factor of the algorithm. So now it's easy to see that an algorithm for recursive dynamic neighborhood cover immediately implies an algorithm for decremental APSP that has the same approximation factor and roughly the same total update time. And that's exactly what uh, Chuchui did in her previous work. She gave an algorithm for recursive dynamic neighborhood cover that achieves the following trade-off between approximation factor and total update time. So our main technical contributions are the following. First, we give a black box reduction from APSP in fully dynamic graphs to recursive dynamic neighborhood covering problem. And secondly, we improve the deterministic algorithm for recursive dynamic neighborhood covering problem. So for the reduction, we show that given an algorithm for rect NC that achieves approximation ratio alpha W, where W is some parameter, in total update time big O of M to the one plus O of epsilon, we get an algorithm for fully dynamic APSP that achieves approximation ratio alpha of n to the third to the O of one over epsilon in update time n to the O of epsilon per update operation. And for the improved algorithm for rect NC, we improve the approximation ratio to log log M to the two to the O of one over epsilon to the third while maintaining the roughly the same uh, total update time. Putting them together, we get our algorithm for fully dynamic, dynamic APSP where they get an algorithm that achieves approximation factor alpha equals to the log log m to the two to the o of one over epsilon to the third in update time o of n to the o of epsilon per update operation. I will now describe each of our technical contributions. So first, reduction from fully dynamic APSP to rectine NC. We use a hierarchical partition of the timeline, given a precision parameter epsilon. We use two other parameters q and m. There are q level of our data structure, for every level, we define a different uh, partition of the timeline into phases. Recall that our graph undergoes an online sequence of edge insertion and deletions. And to define phases on each level, let's ignore edge insertions for now. So for each level L, we make sure that each level L phase contains exactly M to the Q minus L edge insertions. And this makes sure that the number of edges, number of phases in each level L is exactly M to the L. So for example, in level zero, there's only one single phase that contains all edge insertions. And in level Q, there are M to the Q phases where each phase only contains one edge insertion, okay? So uh, with this definition, we can see that each level L phase is contained in some level L minus one phase. So let's take a closer look at this relation. So let's phi be our level L phase. Let's phi prime be the unique level L minus one phase that contains phi. We define this set of edges E of phi to be the set of edges inserted in G since the beginning of phase phi prime, but before the beginning of phase phi. And we say that our level L data structure will be responsible, responsible for this set of edges during phase phi. So we say that uh, the level of every edge E in this uh, set of edges E phi is L. So we can see that at all times T for every vert edge E, either E is an original edge of the graph or E belongs to E5 for some level L. If it's in the first case, then we say that the level of E0. So now we can also define a level for a path to be the largest level of any of its edges. I will now describe our level L data structure. So the level L data structure will be initialized from scratch after each level L phase. We maintain a graph HL, which is a bipartite graph that is viewed as an input to the rectangle NC problem, where V is the set of regular vertices 
there will be endpoint of all edges in E of phi, where phi is the current phase, uh, current level L phase that we're considering, and U is the set of super nodes. And we ignore edge insertion during current phase, and we can apply algorithm for rectal NC to maintain sparse number who covers CL of HL. So with this, we can think of the set of super nodes as a subset of the clusters from previous levels. Okay, so recall that our central goal is to support short path queries. So what do I mean by this? Uh, so given two vertices X and Y in G, if there's a path P connecting X to Y in G of length roughly D, and the level of the path is L, then we would like our level all data structure to, re to be responsible for this query. However, it's not clear how our data structure can do this. So for example, the edges of P might belong to different levels. That means that no single graph HL will contain P. And it's also possible that vertices of P might not even be in HL. And even worse, it's even possible that uh, XY might not be even in HL. So the challenge is that we need to deal with coordination between different levels. Hierarchical partition of timeline and edges are used many times before for solving dynamic APSP problems. They also need to deal with this coordination between different levels. And one recent example is the following. In 2020, Foster et al. gives an algorithm that uses hierarchical partition of time horizon and edges. They maintain a low stretch probabilistic tree embedding of the graph. They circumvent the challenge of coordinating between, between different levels by combining a tree maintained at each level into a single tree with relatively low height. However, the drawback of their work is that they can only support distance queries. So if we try to similarly combine graphs from different levels in order to overcome the challenge of coordinating between them, we will obtain another fully dynamic graph. And it's not clear how we can support short path queries in that graph. So I will now describe how we overcome this challenge of coordinate, coordinating between different levels. So the first tool we use is something called flattened set of vertices. So for every cluster, we define a set V F of C that is a subset of vertices of G that cluster C represents. And we can now complete the description of our level L graph HL using VF of C. So like before, the set of regular vertices V will be the endpoint of all edges in EFI, where phi is the current level L phase that we're considering. And all the set of super nodes includes super nodes UC, where C are clusters such that V intersecting with VF of C is not empty. And for the edges, we add an edge VC, VX and UC for all X and C, where X belongs to this flattened set of vertices. So now the question is, how do we define this flattened set of vertices? We want this set to be rich enough so that our graph HL allows us to support short path queries. But on the other hand, we also want this to be small enough to ensure that our algorithm can run efficiently. So coming up with the correct definition for this flattened set of vertices is one of the main contribution of our paper. The second tool we use is something called a covering chain. I'm not going to give a detailed definition here, but intuitively, a covering chain is a sequence of clusters and vertices that are uh, that spans through uh, many different levels. So, and they're defined in a specific way so that uh, we can compute them efficiently as well. And it is these structures that span through different levels allows us to coordinate between them. So, uh, how do we exactly do this? First, for every vertex x of g, we can use covering chain to define a small set j l of x of regular vertices that lies at level l. And then we show that if there's a level L path of less roughly D connecting X to Y in G, then there are vertices X prime in J of X and Y prime in J of Y with short path P prime connecting them in HL. And we can also transform P prime into a path in G of comparable length. So putting everything together, we're now able to support short path queries. And this completes the high level overview of our reduction from uh, fully dynamic APSP to rectangle NC problem. Now I'll discuss our improved deterministic algorithm for rectangle NC. So first of all, notice that rectangle NC can be reduced to two problems, maintain cluster and maintain variable cover. Maintain cluster is a problem of maintaining a single cluster and maintain NC is the problem of coordinating between different clusters to maintain sparse neighborhood cover. So true to stock 21 give algorithm for both of these uh, sub problems and we provide improvements over both of them, and I'll discuss them separately. First, for maintain cluster problem, we're given a cluster C that undergoes edge deletion, isolated vertex deletion, and splitting, together with a parameter D star. And our goal is to support short path queries. Given two vertices X and Y in the cluster, we need to return a path connecting them of less, less than or equals to beta times D star, where beta is the approximation factor of our algorithm for maintain cluster problem. 
However, one problem is that the diameter of C might become too large. So when this happens, we say that uh, any, any time the algorithm can reset flag f of c. If they do that, they must provide a pair of witness x and y such that the distance between x and y is greater than d star. Then the algorithm will receive a sequence of edge and vertex deletions after which x or y are deleted from c and the flag is lowered. And then we ask that the query cannot be asked when the flag is up. I will now give an overview on how Chuchu Stock 21 solved this. The first idea is the use of expander graphs. Suppose we can find the large expander h that is in c we can run APSP on expanders, and this will handle short path queries within the expander. And then we can maintain a ES tree that is in C that is rooted in the expander. By this, I mean that we can add a source vertex S and then connect S to every vertices in H and build a tree from there. This will ensure that all the vertices, vertices in C are close to vertices in H. And then this, with this, we can now handle short path queries within the uh, cluster. So the problem is, what if C does not have, contain a large expander? A second idea that she uses is something called balanced pseudo cuts, which is also introduced in her stock 21 paper. So a balanced pseudo cut is a set of vertices T, such that if I remove T from the R cluster C, then for every remaining vertex, the D star neighborhood of V is small. So one of the key results in her paper is the following. She showed that she showed an algorithm that computes a pseudo cut T an expander defined over a large, large subset of T that is embedded in C via a short path that, that causes low congestion. So with this key result, she did the following. Given the pseudo cut T and the expander X and the embedding into C, if the pseudo cut T is large, that means that our expander X that is embedded in C is also large. So then we can use the expander based approach. However, if the pseudo cut T is small, we can exploit the small size of the pseudo cut and do a double recursion on two small instances. And this is what leads to a doubly exponential dependence of alpha on one over poly epsilon. Okay, so this only gives us uh, beta equals to log n to the two to the o of one over epsilon. So what is the problem? The problem is with the use of expander graphs. The problem with expander is the following. So it seems like a factor of log n approximation is inevitable if we use expander graph for distance-based problems. Since we use APSP on expander as a subroutine, it's inevitable that we will suffer the corresponding loss on approximation factors. A recent work by Chu Choi's uh, Stolda 22 paper suggests the use of walk connected graph, which is specifically designed to overcome this difficulty. She designed toolkits around walk connected graphs. For example, she gives an algorithm for APSP on walk connected graphs that achieves alpha equals to two to the one over poly epsilon approximation factor. So now it seems like it's a good idea to replace uh, expander graph with well connected graphs. So that, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We need an analog of the key result in Chu Chui's stock 21 paper. Recall that she gives an algorithm that computes a pseudo cut T and expander defined over a large subset of T that is embedded into C via short path that causes low congestion. So we provide a new algorithm that computes a pseudo cut T, a well connected graph that is defined over a large sub subset of T that is then embedded into C via a short path that causes low congestion. This replacement of expanders using well connected graphs for this key result is one of the main technical contribution of our paper. With this new key result, we can do the following. Now we can start off with the pseudo cut T and then well connected graph that is defined over a large subset of the pseudo cut and an embedding of this graph into our cluster. So if the pseudo cut T is small, then we can do the same thing as before, do this double recursion on two small instances However, this time, if the pseudo cut T is large, we can then use expander based approach, but with expander replaced by a well connected graph. And this will give us uh, approximation ratio that's much better, which is two to the O of one over epsilon to the six. This completes the high level overview of our improved algorithm for maintaining cluster problem. So now I will talk about maintaining neighborhood covering problem and our improvement for it. So maintaining neighborhood cover problem is the same as Rectan NC but we no longer require it to support short path queries. So because we can simply apply maintain cluster to each cluster in the neighborhood cover, and then that will take care of the shortest path query. But recall that the flag f of c may be raised in the maintain cluster problem. So it is our job in maintain nc to respond to that. So the goal of maintain neighborhood cover problem are the following. First, we need to maintain a d alpha d neighborhood cover c of h. And maintain AC also needs to provide flag lowering sequence 
of valid operations that will be applied to maintain cluster. Recall that in maintain cluster problem, the flag FC is only raised if the diameter of the cluster becomes too large. And we use DSTAR to quantify that. So it's easy to see that uh, the gap between D star and our distance parameter D will contribute to the approximation factor. So we would like this to be as little as possible. However, maintain neighborhood cover only works if the gap between D and D star is sufficiently large. So we need to find the right balance. In Chuchu's previous work, she provided a simple algorithm that worked if the ratio D star over D is at least omega of log n. And that leads to the eventual approximation factor alpha equals log n to the two to the over one over epsilon. In our work, we provide a more technically involved algorithm that works even in a setting when d star over d is approximately log log n. And this is one of the main technical contributions to maintainable covering problem. Okay, and I just want to mention that this log log n factor is the only bottleneck for obtaining a better approximation for rectangle nc with the same total update time. So for example, if we can set uh, d star equals to O of d times 2 to the 2 to the 1 over poly epsilon, then we'll immediately get an algorithm that achieves approximation factor alpha equals to two to the two to the over one over poly epsilon in the same total update time. So summary, we show the first algorithm for fully dynamic APSP that simultaneously gets adaptive adversary, near optimal query time, near optimal total update time, and reasonable approximation. And we also get improved algorithm for decremental APSP, where on the way there, we get improved algorithm for rectangle NC, and improved algorithm for maintain cluster and maintain neighborhood covering problem. So one open problem is the, can we get better approximation factor? Recall that uh, the only bottleneck lies in maintain neighborhood cover problem. And that's all, thank you.